What if I told you one playbook could block 90% of attacks before they even happen? This isn't theory. I'm going to prove it using Ansible. In just a few commands, you'll watch me lock down a Linux server like a pro. This might be the difference between getting hacked or staying safe. Let's go. Welcome to Inicyber, where we turn tech headaches into simple workflows. I'm Ini, and here we cover everything from sysadmin to DevOps to cybersecurity tricks in a way everyone can follow. Meet Bob, a sysadmin who's just been told to configure 50 Linux servers before the end of the day. He's got to secure SSH access, update the system, and set up firewalls manually. Bob's confident, but he knows one thing. If he tries to SSH into each one and repeats the steps, he'll either mess up or burn out. This is where Ansible saves the day. Think of it as a command center where Bob writes instructions once and Ansible handles the rest, like a digital army following orders. Ansible is an automation tool that lets you control many servers from one place. It's kind of like a remote control for your entire infrastructure. The host file is Ansible's address book. It's where we tell Ansible which servers to talk to and how to connect to them. YAML files are where the magic happens. These are Ansible's instruction sheets written in plain English that describe exactly what we want done from installing packages to changing configurations to restarting services. In this video, I'll walk you through three simple Ansible playbooks to automatically secure two Linux servers step by step. No stress, no repetition, just clean automated configuration. Start by updating and upgrading packages on the Ansible controller. Next, we install Ansible, but only on the controller. After that, we install Micro and Nano, which are editors. We repeat the step of upgrading and updating for host 1, and then do the same for host 2. Now we generate our SSH key pair. This is done on the Antibo controller. For each prompt, just hit enter to use the default. Next, we will copy the public key to host one. Before that, let's check the IP address. Now we are checking the IP address for host two. Then we copy the key to host one. Type in the password for host one. The key has now been added to host one. We can SSH into host one to confirm. Then exit and repeat the same process for host two. Next, we create a directory and place the host file inside it. In the host file, we define a group called web servers, and under that we have host1, which is an alias. We also specify the Ansible host, the IP address, and Ansible user, the username. We can preview our host file to ensure it looks correct. Now let's test the connection. We run Ansible all ping to ping all hosts. We can also run it without the iPhone I option, and it still works the same. Next, we create a system update YAML playbook. In this playbook, the first section handles system updates and preparation. Each task has a clear name. One of our tasks is to install essential packages like call, git, fill to van. We preview the YAML to make sure everything is set. Then we run the playbook. Type in your password, and now the playbook is running. You can see each task executing. The yellow output indicates changes were made. For example, the packages were installed. Now we test to confirm. First, we check the version of call, and we can see it. Then we check the status of fail to ban, and it's running. 
We repeat the same check for post 2 and again it's working. Now we move on to SSH hard name. The structure is similar to the previous playbook. First we back up the existing config, then we modify the SSH setting, finally we restart the service. Let's preview our SSH hard name YAML. Now we'll enable root login so we can demonstrate that it's working and then lock it down. We set a password for roots, let's use 1234. Then we edit the SSH config file. We change permit login to yes. We uncomment password authentication. Save the file and restart the SSH service. Back in the controller, we try logging in via root with password 1234 and it works. Next, we run our SSH hardening playbook. This disables root login and changes the port. After running it, we try logging in via root again and it's blocked. Let's check the SSH status. It's now listening on port 2222 as expected. We also test the new port by connecting to port 2222 and it works. On host 2, which hasn't been hardened yet, we try the same and it's denied. As you can see, host 2 is still using the default SSH port 22. Now let's move to our third playbook, the firewall. This one runs only on host 2. We start by checking the current firewall status, then we run the playbook. After entering the password, the playbook applies rules that allow only custom SSH ports, deny all incoming, and allow all outgoing. We confirm the status using UFW status verbose, and now the firewall is active with the correct rules applied. If you want to see Bob survive even bigger sysadmin disasters, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. More servers, more automation, and less stress. See you in the next one.